In this presentation, we will discuss a responsibility accounting system. When considering a responsibility accounting system, we are imagining our organization. We are decentralizing our organization. We're putting different managers in charge of different segments, different areas of that organization, giving them more responsibility. As we do so, we're going to assign the responsibility to particular managers, and we're going to hold them accountable for different items those items being the controllable items. So we're going to assign what is it going to be a controllable cost versus an uncontrollable cost by the responsibility units, by the managers to the managers that are in charge of those units, of those segments, of those divisions of the organization. Remember that a controllable cost is one a manager has the power to determine or at least significantly affect the amount incurred. So we're thinking about those costs where management has control over them even if a cost is assigned to a, a specific area or division or is used by that division if the department manager within the division isn't having control over it then we don't want to use it as a performance measure of the performance of that particular manager we're going to use it for other types of, of decision making purposes for that particular unit for that particular segment but when evaluating the performance of a manager, the responsibility of a manager, we only, want to we only want to include those costs which are controllable, those things that they have some power to do something about. An organizational chart is going to be a very useful tool and a necessary tool for responsibility accounting. Because remember what our objective here is to take the organization. It's going to be to break them up into separate units, separate segments, and then assign responsibility to that. In order for this to work well, we need to know exactly what those units are so that we can assign specific responsibilities. What we don't want to have happen, therefore, is to have some types of things that are important responsibilities that are not assigned. No one has been assigned the responsibility over them. The only way to really cover that is to have a pretty specific organizational chart, have very defined and specific roles that are going to be assigned to different units within the organization, and then have appropriate measures that we can assign for our objectives and the measurement of the performance of whether those objectives have been met by the departments. When considering the responsibility accounting reporting, we can see that the lower levels are going to have less controllable costs. Obviously, the plant managers here at the department level will have the controllable costs of their plant, of their department. They will then be reporting to the vice president of the region. And the region, in essence, has to have controllable costs, which include the plant manager costs and so on and so forth as we go up through the hierarchy through the chain here. Note, however, that if we look at the plant manager level, they're going to have more detailed reports about what they have control over. They're on the floor. They're on that ground level. We want detailed reports about that management, what they have control over, so that they can make the appropriate decisions here. As we move those costs, those controllable costs that are under the vice president, they may have less detail from a department by department level that will then move up to the vice president level. However, of course, the amount of costs, controllable costs that are going to be under the umbrella of the vice president will increase. So in other words, on the department level, more detail of the reports, the types of costs that are being controlled, but there are fewer controllable costs. As we go up the line, there's going to be less detail of the types of costs. However, there's going to be more broad amount more amount of controllable costs as we go up the chain so if we imagine this situation we have the report on the store level let's say we have a very detailed report of the controllable costs of the store if we think about the regional manager here the vice president of the region then this report is going to be summarized as we go to the the vice president because they don't need as much detail they're not on the ground level controlling the controllable costs. that's going to be the job of the manager of the store so here we can see that there's going to be a lot more uh, controllable costs there's going to be a lot more detail a lot more information uh, but it's going to be less detailed than the information on the store level the store level in other words is going to have a lot of detail about the costs they have control over summarize those give them to the regional office the regional office has less detail for each store each place but of course is in charge of ultimately 
more controllable costs as they are, are in charge of multiple regions. So if we consider just a, how this cost structure could work, if we consider an executive vice president of operations, these being the controllable costs, this is at the higher level now, we're talking about the higher level, the vice, uh, the executive vice president of operations, we got the controllable costs, the salaries for the VPs, the uh, quality control costs, the office costs, the east region, the west region. Then we can break out the east region, who's going to be in charge of the east region. This is the vice president's going to be held accountable for the east region, where we have the controllable costs, including the salaries of the department managers, not the salary of the vice president, because that's not something they control. That's going to be controlled up here, right? But they have the salaries of the department managers, the depreciation, the insurance. We have the department one, two, and three. And then the totals here, of course, are included in the line item in the executive vice president operations. So we can see up here in this report on the, on the upper level of our hierarchy, the executive vice president has more controllable costs, is overseeing more costs, of course, but has less detail than we see down here on the vice president of the regional office. The totals then being our, our line item here. So our line item within the executive vice president operations report then is broken out to the detail in the vice president for the east region report and of course those totals add up there and then if we drill down into the department one then we we would then have the plant manager for department one again here's the summary information for the for the higher up level the vice president of the east region here's the plant manager level where we have now the detail of that department one. They got the direct materials, the direct labor, the overhead, the totals then here. So the more detailed report then being on the lower level and then it being summarized up at uh, the higher level. Now we might wanna see this in reverse. It might be easier to see this in reverse if we go from the bottom up. So we go from the lower level up. Here's where we start with the lower level. And you might imagine this is how the actual reporting would happen because we would have to gather these things together at the lower level and then summarize them so we start from a so we go from like kind of a bottom up type of structure as we put these things together possibly so we have the plant management department one so this is the lower level we can think of like the department level the store level we have the direct uh, materials the labor the overhead and then those totals are going to be included in the report that goes to the vice president for the region so this report if we were then the department one we report here and say here's our report this is our summary information the vice president for the east region has the report that shows that in summary as well as the other departments that they're in charge of and then the other costs that they have control over the salaries for the department management depreciation and insurance and then if we go at the level up here's our totals we've got the vice president for the east region and that's going to total up to as we go up to the executive vice president of operations so now we've got the east and the west so if we were then in charge of the east we would have our detailed report sum that up that's going to be part of the reporting to the executive vice president of operations as long as well as the west the salaries and vps the, and the quality control costs and the office costs are going to be included as controllable costs for the executive vice president of operations so if you see it all in one you can see this is from top to bottom or bottom to top you might want to think about it at either way again it, it sometimes might be easier to think about it from the bottom level here's here's the store we put our our stuff together summarize it it's going to go up included here same process would happen for department two and department three and then we're going to sum up the detail that's that's in control of the vice president of the east region and those totals will then be included at the next level up in the executive vice president of operations we see the detail down here. It's one line item on the report for the executive vice president of operations.